Hey everyone, I'm feeling super lucky to be interviewing the extraordinary Holden Shepherd again. Holden is the author of the incredible Invisible Boys, and it has won so many awards, I'm going to need a read off the sheet for this because it's so many. <laughs> it has won the 2018 Hungerford Award, 2019 Kathleen Mitchell Award, winner of the 2017 Ray Cop Residency Award, was shortlisted for the 2020 Readings Young Adult Book Prize, Noble Book 2020 CVCA Award was shortlisted for the 2020 Victorian Premier Literary Awards, won the WA Premier's Award for an Emerging Writer, has been shortlisted for the 2020 Readings Young Adults Book Prize, and longlisted for the 2020 <laughs> Indie Book Awards. Have I missed steady? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you got them all, and I feel very <laughs> like I need to like chop them out of my bio or something. <laughs> no, you, you need to display them. That's amazing to get this many. That's incredible. It's punching above its weight, eh? Hey? Yeah, <laughs> this is an incredible book. So amazing. <laughs> Thank he you. He is a fire. As well as all of these awards, his book is being transformed into a TV series. That is incredible. I'm so keen. I find Holden to be an inspirational author because of his book of his boys, which features three gay characters growing up in a rural Aussie town. So it really gives an insight into what it's like to grow up in that type of town. And I feel like we really need this representation of the LGBTQ community in our literature, especially for teens. So I think that's truly inspirational. And if you have not seen our interview from last year, I will put it down so you can watch it because it's amazing. We had fun. That was a good interview. That, that was an amazing interview. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for letting me grill you again. Yeah, I'm so happy to be here. Grill away. I'm ready to be grilled. <laughs> Are you ready? Yep. Yep. Hit me. <laughs> Don't actually hit me. <laughs> I'm very fragile, you know. <laughs> Your Visible Boys recently won the 2019 Western Australia Premier's Book Award for Emerging Writers. How did you celebrate? Um, well, on the night, I drank a lot of champagne. Um, that was fun. Um, and I went for a little like Sanchiro date afterwards with my husband, just the two of us very quietly late at night in Northbridge and just had a little like, you know, oh wow, kind of moment. You know, it was like, oh, like, because there's a lot of prestige associated with that award, which is cool. But there's also a lot of cash associated with that award, um, which, you know, like we have, you know, struggled through COVID like most people have um, financially. So to get like a big injection of $15,000 it was just like this big relief. It was a big weight off our shoulders to just kind of go, oh, we're not, we're not on the edge of crisis anymore. And it was a really nice moment to just go, let's just go have a hot chocolate and some churros and just chill out. So, so that's what we did. And uh, it was very nice. But I do have like, I have plans for like a bit of a bigger celebration, you know. Um, I don't know what. We'll probably just go for dinner with some family or something like that. That's a really awesome way to celebrate. I love that. I think so. Your book, Invisible Voice, is going to be a TV series. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm so pumped. This is such a dream come true because, uh, you know, I've had these characters in my head for literally years. I mean, I, I, kind of, I crafted them all in early 2017, so it's you know, three, nearly four years that um, they've been in my head and they've been in people's heads now for almost a year. The book's been out nearly a year now. Um, so it, it's like, oh my God, they're gonna be real people gonna be people on the screen and they'll be casting and they'll be you know they'll come to life I'm pretty pumped uh, like I think it's really gonna be um, a bit of a dream come true kind of moment uh, obviously there's lots of steps to go through to you know go from getting the, the the rights film and TV rights optioned to getting it developed to getting it produced to getting it onto a screen so um, there's a lot of steps to take there's a lot of things that could go wrong but um, I've always been an optimist and I'm like it's gonna happen and I'm gonna make it happen so uh, I, I get to be a little bit involved with the, the TV series. Oh, so, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah. So um, they, my agent negotiated for me to uh, to be involved in the writer's room and to, to have some creative input. So um, I will be kind of in the room. I, I won't, you know, it, it's it's the director and the producer's kind of baby and they're, they're running the show and, and it's their, you they're in charge. And you better make sure it stays true to it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, so, and, and the good thing is we had about three three or four different parties who wanted to option the rights. So I talked to all of them and I could kind of choose like who's the best one, who, who has the right vision for the show and who really gets it. And uh, Nick Verso, who's the director, and Tanya Chambers, who's the producer, they just really got it. They, uh, Nick's gay himself, so he gets it and he, you know, he, he, he knows what, you know, he knows that world. 
and we're looking to get probably uh, probably a team of people who are gay themselves, you know, writing and, and involved because that means the story will be authentic and it'll be coming from a real place. Oh, I love that. I love that they're so on board with it. Mm, mm. I know it's going to be an amazing TV because it's an amazing book. It's going to be a great book. It is amazing, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've been told I'm too humble. <laughs> Would you believe, can you believe I, I could be too humble? I'm alright. <laughs> <laughs> How true will it be staying to the book? Um, pretty true. I, I've had some really good chats with uh, with Nick around uh, what we would look to to adapt and what we would look to change. There are, you know, we've had a, a chat very recently, and we'll probably um, it, there's some things that we will modify slightly, but they're not going to be things that you, you would kind of you wouldn't see the TV show and go, oh my god, I can't believe they did that. You'd be like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Like it, it makes the story work in a certain way. So um, so there will be little kind of tweaks here and there. Um, I don't want to say what they are yet because they might all change as well. We might get further along in the process and then realise actually, let's take it back to this. But but essentially the core of the book will stay the same. Um, there's not going to be kind of fundamental changes. Um, you're still going to have those three main characters. Still going to follow their stories. Uh, and and yeah, I think you know it's just going to be fun. Like even things like the soundtrack. You know, like there's a lot of really good music in the book um, in terms of like the chapter titles and Charlie listening to a lot of music and getting through um, what he's going through. Um, so I'm kind of keen to like see how that plays out. You know, obviously, probably can't afford to license every big rock song ever, um, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll probably have a handful in there that are really cool. And I like the idea of using Aussie, Aussie music, um, music by by gay artists maybe. Um, that so it all kind of feels quite authentic to what the book is about. That's the so plan. cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad it's going to stay as true as possible because I don't like watching movies. They're based on books and then they get, they get everything wrong because then it's like, I've read the book, the book's bad. Yeah, well, I, I usually feel the same way whenever I see an adaptation, yeah. I'm like, oh, but the book was better. And the book probably, you know, often is better, but I think the way to look at it is not better or worse, it's to look at it as the adaptation is a different beast. You know, like, it, it's, this yeah. is the book, it's always going to be that book, and the TV series is going to be something slightly different. Yeah. Um, you've got someone else putting their creative vision on it, and it's a creative vision I'm happy with. So, however Nick and Tanya do that, I'm um, just excited to see it. And it will be slightly different, but it'll be amazing in its own way, I think. Exactly. It's it's going to be incredible. I know it is. Will you be appearing as an extra? Yes. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, yeah so I, I actually asked Nick a little while ago. <laughs> because, um, cause, you know, once people find out that the, the TV show is getting made, um, well, you would not believe how many people from high school and how many people I used to work with have come out of the woodwork and gone, oh, I want to be, you know, can I be an extra? Can I act in it? Or things like that. And, uh, which I don't mind, I get it. If someone, if someone I went to high school with had done this, I'd probably do the same thing. I'd be like, wow, that's really cool. Um, but a lot of people are like, can I be an extra? And I'm like, you're the 8,000th person to ask me. Um, but sure. <laughs> like, like, I mean, but you know, I, I have no control over that. I, you know, the, the director, the casting agent, they're the ones who actually make those decisions. I have no say um, in those kind of things. So, you know, if people want to be extras, I guess, sure. But when people are like, oh, can I be one of the main actors? I'm like, well, are you an actor? You know, like, are you an actor? You know, if you are an actor, then I'm sure you can audition and maybe you'll nail it. But if you're not an actor, then probably not. Um, but yeah, I, sp I spoke to Nick and said, look, I haven't asked you this, but I want to be an extra. <laughs> I want a little cameo like Stan Lee, you know, in Spider-Man and oh, like yeah. all the Marvel movies. Yeah, and it was like the game, Spot the Stan Lee. Yeah, yeah. So I want to do that because this is the first thing that's getting optioned for me. It's the first thing that's getting adapted. And I thought, Maybe if I start now, then I can keep it as like a running thing. If any of my books get optioned and made into films in the future, there was this little holding <laughs> shepherd in the background. Like, and I just want to be like a random background, like like drunk hobo number three, you know, like something like that. Like just a really, just completely random kind of uh, background. And like, if anyone knows me, they'll recognise me. And if people don't know who what I look like, they'll just see a random, you know, drunk hobo. Um, so, or maybe I'll try to get into shape, and I'll be like really fit hobo. I don't know. <laughs> That's Either way, your ex is going to be incredible. I hope so, yeah. I, I will have that little brief moment. Last time we chatted, Invisible Boys had only just been released. Mm -hmm. That feels like a whole crazy lifetime ago. Yeah. Did you imagine it would be as popular as it is? Um, no. I wanted it to be, but I didn't know how it would be received. And I think last time we spoke, it was too early to tell. I think it just, it was either like the day it was released or the day after, like it was very, very... I think it was um, like the day before. Yeah, it was, it was like right on the, on the edge, so I didn't know how it would go. Um, and then later that week it went to reprint, um, like within seven days. It just, it did really well out the gates kind of thing, like it just, it, it did really 
well. So no, I didn't think it would um, sell as well. I definitely didn't think it would win all the awards. Like even, like I've never had ambitions to be an award-winning author, literally ever. Like I, uh, it was, I wanted to be like a best-selling commercial author. Like that was my thought. So do you know Matthew Riley? I think I've heard of him. He, he writes, he's like he's sold millions of copies, Aussie author, action thriller kind of stuff. I like his work, but it's like reading a, a movie almost in a book. It's like, it's very movie style. And I always thought I would be like a best-selling popular fiction author. Well, yeah, I hoped I would be best-selling, but my, my aim was the kind of sales. I never thought I would get critical acclaim. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the really kind of bizarre thing about this book is that uh, like it's sold well, but it's actually got a lot of critical acclaim, um, which I never expected. I ne never really had any ambition for. I'm very grateful for it. I'm grateful for the money that comes with it. I'm grateful for the prestige that comes with it. Um, but I never kind of had plans on that. So it's done more than I expected. And the coolest thing probably for me is that I get messages from readers. So people message me all the time, uh, often adults, often gay men um, who grew up in the country and maybe they're 20 or 30 or 40, 50, even 70. Um, and they come to me and say, reading this book helped them process the trauma of what they went through years ago. That's so cool. Uh, that's a cool feeling. Cause you get those messages and you're like, oh, I, I actually helped you. You know, like yeah. I helped them feel better. One of the really cool things is uh, one of the readers I heard from was a guy in his 70s. Uh, and he's a gay man who grew up years ago, coming to terms with his sexuality in a time that was much more prohibitive than what I did. Um, and he, he read the book, he loved it, he sent me this amazing message. And then he saw that I was coming to Brisbane on my book tour. This is November last year. And he literally, there were bushfires at the time. And he literally drove from Coffs Harbour, which is in New South Wales where he lives four hours, five hours, through the bushfires to get to Brisbane because he really wanted to meet me and shake my hand. Oh. And he, he said like when he read it, he cried and, and like couldn't leave the house for three days. It just really, it got into how he felt when he was 20. Aww. So that was, that for me, I was like, oh, like I've helped someone who went through what I went through, but worse, you know, he went through much worse than me yeah, years like... before. And I've helped him process how that felt. So that was cool. Yeah. You're working on another book. Yep. Yes. I'm so yes. excited for this. What spoilers can you give us? Um, no spoilers. End of discussion. <laughs> no. No. Um, I've yes, yeah, so I've written I've written a second book, and uh, that one. So I've just signed with a new agent. Uh, so uh, this agent is Gabby Nair at Left Bank Literary, and so she's read my second book and she's like, "Wow, this is amazing." which is um, good because I want her to sell it to a publisher, obviously. Um, but she's like, this is amazing. And now here's all the stuff we need to change. So um, I've got to dive into the edits probably in the next next few weeks, I would say. Like very soon, I'm, I'm diving into those edits um, to get book two ready. And then during uh, COVID, during the kind of lockdown, March, April, uh, April, May it was, um, I wrote a third book. Um, and that's, that's the first draft of that third book. Um, so both of these books are for adults, but they will, it's pretty much the same as Invisible Boys. Like they will appeal to the same kind of, like teenagers will enjoy them. The sticky notes are coming back. The sticky notes will be coming back. In fact, um, the second book's not too bad, but the third book is, you can't read that. <laughs> the third book's pretty graphic. Um, okay. But, but the second book is, you know, you, you'll probably be able to read most of it. Um, so the second book is, um, it's about friendship and it's about uh, working out who you are working out your identity after you leave your group of friends and you leave high school behind and like what are you after you leave all that behind who are you um so that's that's about all i can give away but there's a bit of like a uh, a mystery element to it as well so like a bit of a, like a dead body kind of situation um so there's this you know it's a kind of identity coming of age story but with this mystery element through it as well love that and i can't fit my sister that's why i can read it so she can put sticky notes in yes yes she can she can protect you but um <laughs> I, that second one's not too bad actually there are some bad ones <laughs> but it's what not i like... what i consider bad it's not what other people consider bad till i really think not as it. bad as the worst is the third one no not okay. as bad as that yeah i'll keep that in mind awesome <laughs> your husband is also an amazing writer so two very creative types living under the same roof who is the most dramatic and who's the one who blows most arguments just completely out of proportion <laughs> and I have asked him this so <laughs> okay I wonder I'm really curious as to what he said um, so the thing with me and Raphael is um, we work together amazingly well as a couple 
you know, on a personal level, if you make us work together, we like within like three minutes, we're like trying to kill each other. Um, it's always been like this. So, so when we, we, we met in creative writing class at university years ago, 2007, um, and so we, we met together in the writing space. And you know, in the early years of our relationship, I was like, oh, like at some point, we, you know, we should collaborate on something. We should, you know, co-write a, a pilot TV show for a TV series, or you know, work on a book together or something. And he was just like, nah, like I'm not working with you. <laughs> um, so, so like we work really well personally, professionally. <laughs> we turn and so, whose fault is it? I think I feel like we're both at fault. If I'm mature, it takes two to tango. Um, but of the two of us, I'm the one with a really hot temper. So I actually will, uh, I don't know if he told you that, but um, I will flare up really quickly, but then I also recover from it really quickly. So I'll like snap and then I'll be angry for like 15 seconds. And I'll be like, okay, everything's cool now. I'm sorry, okay, let's move on. And he'll be like, no, 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 I'm still pissed off. We're talking about this. <laughs> and we'll have to deal with it for like the next day. Um, so that's, that's the answer. I'm, but I'm definitely the worst one. He, he's really patient with me. He's really caring and loving and um, yeah, I, like he puts up with me. <laughs> I'm the brat. Christmas is sweet together. <laughs> now onto the speech question. All right, bring it. What are you writing at the moment aside from your next two books? Um, well, the funny thing is about being a writer is that you don't just have books to write, you have all kinds of projects to work on. Um, people commission you for all kinds of things. So I'm working on a horror story for a Love Oz YA anthology that's coming out with Wakefield Press in 2021. Um, I'm working on a short story for a writing WA project at the moment. Um, I meant to be writing a few other pieces, but I just don't have time. Um, I've got lots of ideas, but yeah, that's, that's the main thing right now. Have you tried a new flavor of ice cream lately that you just love? Yes, I tried, um, I went to a place called Stampede in the Fremantle, I don't know if it's Fremantle Markets, but it's a market in Fremantle and Stampede Gelada is the place, and it was amazing. I think it was salted custard. Um, and there was another flavor I had, and it was like, I wanna say like musket grape or something. That's not right. But it was some kind of like grapey wine kind of flavor ice cream. Um, it was really nice, yeah. Which book character do you, or have you had a crush on? Um, it's embarrassing. Um, have you read the Narnia books? Yes. Okay, Prince Caspian. When I, when I read, um, uh, so embarrassing, <laughs> when I was, a, a young, you know, probably your age, you know, younger, yeah, you know, I, I read those books and uh, Prince Caspian's in book four and five, mo mostly, maybe six, I think, book four and five. Um, but I am <laughs> having kind of like dreams about Prince Caspian. And, and you know, I didn't know I was, I was gay then. Um, so I just remember thinking like, oh, I really like Prince Caspian. <laughs> but yeah, I was having like a big crush on him. Yeah, this is pathetic, isn't it? <laughs> what was your worst subject at school? Um, my worst subject? Uh, phys ed. I was really bad at sport. Um, not because I was bad at it, but because I didn't think I could do it, because I was a nerd, and I was told that I was uncool, and you know, you're no good at sport. Um, whereas as an adult, I, I go to the gym every day, I play footy, I love sport, um, but no, when I was at school, phys ed uh, <laughs> was my worst, for sure. Who was your favourite or most inspirational author this year? Um, I'm going to say uh, probably like some of the debut authors who had their books come out during the middle of the lockdown and like they, like I imagine how that would have felt to have this book come out and not be able to have a proper launch or have any events or do a tour and it just would have been heartbreaking. So um, people like Kay Kerr who has a book called uh, Please Don't Hug Me, um, Anna Waitley who's got a book uh, called Peter Lies Writing Normal. Um, those kind of uh, debut YA, Love Oz YA authors. Um, also someone called Tabitha Bird, who's from Brisbane. Um, and she wrote about, uh, well, I haven't read her book yet. Her book is called A Lifetime of Impossible Days and it's won lots of uh, accolades. Um, but it's, she had to dive into her own trauma from her childhood to write this book. And I think she's had to be really brave to do that. So I'm really looking forward to reading it. Would you prefer to be isolated on an island or in a forest? Um, am I being isolated in like a happy holiday kind of way or is it like I'm trapped? Like, what's what, the... Your spin on it. And let's go happy holiday. Okay, so if I was having like a happy holiday, I'd be on like a little island somewhere. But if I was like trapped, I'd want to be in a forest so I could like get, you know, river water and berries. I don't know. <laughs> enough to survive. 
as opposed to like I don't feel like on an island without any supplies I would feel really stressed out like what if I you know like I'm a, like I've, I've got like a panic disorder and shit so I'm like what if I die what if I'm about to die I need to get to a hospital I feel like there's a better chance of getting to a hospital in a forest than from a deserted island so okay yeah, does, that show that? You, does that show you how crazy I am? <laughs> Well, I mean, an island in the middle of nowhere, that, that's fair enough. Like, I would use a forest too. It's, it's yeah. got to be close to the mainland. Like, it's got to be close to civilization. Yeah, yeah. I like, think read so. all the. If you read books, they're close to something. <laughs> that's what forests do. Yes. I, yes, I agree. What's the weirdest place or thing you've gotten inspiration from? <laughs> um, I had a short story come out in Westerly magazine. Uh, in February this year and it's called Irreversible and it's a very serious like short story but I <laughs> the inspiration came one morning I woke up and uh, like I went to the dummy and I was standing there peeing and I was looking at um, the back of a bottle of like toilet duck or whatever you know like the, the stuff you clean a toilet with yeah. and I just saw the word you know like may cause irreversible damage and I was like whoa irreversible like if something's irreversible like it's fucked up forever you know like it, it, like that's that's full on man and then i went oh, wow imagine like that feeling but like related to like coming out like once you come out it's irreversible you can't put it back in and so then i ended up writing a short story irreversible based off the back of the t detergent bottle i saw while peeing <laughs> so it's very very highfalutin literary stuff that's awesome you can live in any book which one would you just love to live in Mm, look, I know it's really generic, but probably Harry Potter. I, I grew up reading Harry Potter, and like that was the thing when I was a teenager. It was still, you know, the books were coming out, and, and it was very, very exciting. And I used to like, um, I used to write down all the spells, like in a book. I was like, okay, this is another spell, like I've learned. Like I was like trying to like catalogue them, so like I knew what all the spells were, and I knew all the spells. So, um, and I even tried to write fan fiction once, Harry Potter fan fiction. So I would, I would go to Hogwarts if I could. Yeah. I, I had a dream once, right? And I was a wizard. And I like was like doing the spells, but like at the back of like the supermarket that I worked at. <laughs> so I worked at a warehouse and I was like like doing all these spells. And I could fly. And it was so cool. So if I could live in that world, I would totally do it. Yes, I love that. <laughs> What's your biggest achievement so far? Um career wise or personally? Either way. Mm, um like personally it's I don't know. Getting married, being with Raphael, and, and um, committing to us like that's that's you know uh, like making a, a marriage is like it takes a long time to make that happen, and you just get to know each other better and better. So I'm um, proud of that, especially because I used to be a committophobe. I used to be like, oh my god, am I in a serious relationship? Like this is scary, this is terrifying. Like uh, I used to find it so horrifying. So um, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of of being with my husband. Um, the book stuff. I guess, hmm. you know, <laughs> I, I am very proud of this. I am very proud that um, it took me a lot of years. I started writing when I was seven, 20 odd years of really hard work and I got this and uh, I'm very, very proud of it. I'm very, very proud that I didn't give up and that I didn't just become uh, a banker, which I did for a while. I was a banker, I worked in a bank. I was a laborer for a while. And at any of those points, I could have given up and just been that thing full time. And a couple of times I talked about it. Um, so I'm, I'm proud that I, not necessarily what the books achieved, but the fact that I did it. Like even, even if I hadn't got published, I committed to writing it. And that, that took a lot of energy and that took guts. Oh, those are so cool to you, Thanks. Thanks. Do you have any advice to share with young writers? Don't do it, it's a trap. <laughs> <laughs> Blooper reel. Um, no, I think use it. I mean, that's good advice. Um, my advice for younger writers is start writing, and I know you've already done that. Um, but that's the best thing you can do, because when I was your age especially, I would plan a lot, and make notes, and draw maps, and do character profiles, and, and those things were fun. And you know, I would brainstorm names for characters, look at baby name books and be like, oh, like, these are great names for characters, but I never wrote a single word of the actual story. And so my advice is always like, just start writing, it's going to be really shit, but that's okay. Like that's, that's actually the way I wrote this book. That's how I write everything is by letting it be crap. And if you give yourself permission to write crap, it frees you up to write the good stuff as well. So that's my advice is start writing and let it be rubbish.
Incredible. Thank you so much for letting me grill you again. This is amazing. I enjoyed the grilling. I feel pretty much well done at this point. Like, you know, the barbecue, meat. I feel well done. <laughs> um, so thank you very much, Imani, for having me. It's been fun. Make sure to check out A Whole New Shepherd on his social media. And if you are of age, please like. But if you are younger, use the kids. Ha <laughs> ha!